Hey, good afternoon there. How's it going? Um, what I want to do today is walk through setting up included warranties um, that you can put on an item. And then when you ship the item, your item can go to install based warranty comes over and gets created in subscription management. So we'll walk through the setup steps and then I'll walk through a quick um, flow between order management and subscriptions to kind of show you how that works. So starting out, uh, we need to be in subscription management. We'll walk through some of the setup steps. So we'll go into subscriptions. And then we come over here to this little icon, which is all the setup stuff. And you'll notice down here, this is where a lot of the entitlement information is. We'll be using reprocess install base updates, and we're going to go right now into manage subscription rules. So first manage subscription rules. This is where we're going to set up some, some defaults um, on how you know your business is going to process the warranties, what business unit should it go to, et cetera. So you can come in and, and give some common rules. Um, what is your what business unit, et cetera? Um, is this an asset upgrade or replacement? Those kinds of things. So it's some basic rules here and which templates will you use uh, for the subscriptions? So the next thing we want to look at is um, availability, standard coverages, and default coverages. So manage availability. This is if you're going to do a service contract type work or perhaps on a warranty, we're offering the client 24-7 or 24-5 or some kind of a service. So these are kind of service level agreements. We can put in our service level start and end dates. We can add in exceptions, which are set up here. So we're going to accept New Year's Eve uh, and Christmas from this as an example. And so these are going to be contractual obligations that we're giving to our customers um, based on warranty that we're going to be creating. The next thing we need to set up is standard coverage. And standard coverage is going to do several things. One, it's going to bring in, um, we'll open up silver here. And if you're already using it, it's going to give you this message, say, hey, you don't want to change this because we have it enforced. A couple of things it's going to give you. It's going to give us our entitlement rules, service, response times, all kinds of metrics that we can track to. Um, and it's also going to give us uh, <clears throat> basic discounts. What is the customer entitled to under this warranty? So this is in case there's a service that needs to go out or a repair where they come back in under depot repair. How should the customer be billed for the work that's being done? And so you set up these service activities, billing types, and then decide the adjustment type that you're going to use. But for example, um, it's 100% on labor material and expense in this case. And maybe under certain circumstances, we want to bill them at 20 or 80%. So these service activities are actually set up um, in setup and maintenance under, um, I think it's manage service activities. And in the PowerPoint below that I've added, I've actually walked through the steps on how you can set up these different service activities. And the same thing with the different billing types, labor material, expense, et cetera. Those are actually set up in um, under billing types and some service logistic looks up. And again, all of that is included in the uh, PowerPoint that's included with this. So I won't walk through those here, but you're welcome to grab that PowerPoint and take a look at those. So now that we've set up, um, we'll get out of this, availability, and then we can do default coverages. So this is where we can go in and say, if it's a particular customer, we're going to default um, a coverage level. We can do a global default. So different, maybe different customers, we give different warranty levels those kinds of things. So this is where I would, would set that kind of information up um, so that I can have, have these customers get the contractual obligations that we've agreed to. So this is the basic setup in, in subscription management that needs to be done for um, included warranties. So the next thing I'm going to pop over into is um, going to go 
and look at the item setup. So there's two items that we basically, I'll walk through how to set them up um, in product information management. The first one is we're gonna set up a warranty. Um, I'll actually use a warranty that's already existing in the system for, as an example. Um, so we're gonna go to manage items and the warranty in this system is, um, starts with war, warranty standard, I believe it's the 12 month. So we'll go into this and you'll notice that these are set up in org 000. So we'll go into the warranty and you could set up different um, item classes for these if you choose. It's just, we're just saying this is a standard warranty. But what's important is over here in specifications, the first thing is under under the service tab. Um, we're going to want to set up um, that it's, you know, the asset part of it, we're not worried about too much because we're really not dealing with an asset. We will use those when we set up the item, but not here. What we're looking at is down here under the service contract section, right? So this is set up as a, as a fixed duration of 12 months. You can do open-ended or variable, give it a duration. Is it months, years? whatever those happen to be based on the time period that you've set up. Is it milestone? Is it interval expiration? And then this service start delay. So this is where we can offset the warranty start date from the shift date. So the way this works is you would take your shift date and add this number of delays, days delayed to it. For instance, if I put 10 and my shift date were um, October 1st, then the warranty would start on October 11th. So this is a way that we can delay the start of a warranty beyond um, the ship date. Because, you know, you're shipping, you got to get to them and set it up and all those kinds of things. And then what is the standard coverage that's going to be on this uh, particular warranty? And, and we're saying this is silver coverage. So again, this is the setup here. Um, also under sales order management, we have to give it a product type. And there are, um, I think, four product types that deal with warranties, included warranty, extended warranty, service level agreement, or software maintenance. All of these will create a, an entitlement type of a, of, a, of a warranty. So we need to put these, like extended warranties, if I'm going to sell a warranty after the fact, or maybe they call up and say, hey, my warranty's um, canceling out, or, or it's just expiring in the next few days. I want to extend it, those kinds of things. So that's where extended warranties come in. And we can also create service contracts for service levels, for maintenance, support, those kinds of things. And that's what these would be for. So that's the basic setup of the warranty item itself. So we're going to get out of this and I'll go into a, a physical asset or physical item that I'll be shipping out. So in our world, we have the FIT 5000, right? And warranties are set up or uh, uh, related, if you will, to the item in in the base org of triple zero um, or whatever your base organization happens to be. And again, for stop here for a second. We'll talk about when we're setting an item uh, to go into install base, we have to do some special setup under the specifications. So it's under service again, and it's this asset section that I showed you uh, a little bit ago. So we can tell it that we want full lifecycle tracking. Um, it's a customer asset, so um, it, which means at the moment that I ship it to the customer, it will go into install base. Full lifecycle, means that from the moment it's produced in house, it goes in install base and I can track it from the moment it went into my finished good until we retire that asset or not tracked, right? Um, when it goes into install base, do I wanna set it up as a maintainable asset? Yes or no, it depends on if you're using maintenance. But if I set it up as maintainable, then I'll be able to find it in my maintenance organization. Do I want genealogy tracking? So this is where we can track by serial, um, et cetera, and track what's going on with this asset through its lifetime and what kind of an asset is it, software equipment. So these are the basic things that we need to set up to make sure that the 
asset that I'm selling actually gets into install base because the way the system works, and I'll, I'm going to be doing a follow on video of now that we've set this all up, how do we, um, how does service logistics work, right? How do I put in a service call on this asset? How does it come back in to be repaired, et cetera? And if it's not an install base, then we can't do that. So that's where we want to keep things in install base. So then we're going to go to relationships here. So this is where I'm going to set up my warranty relationship. And there's all kinds of relationships that you can set up in here. You can be customer number, vendor number, all those kinds of things can be set up here. But I'm setting this up as a warranty type um, relationship with a start date. There can be end dates, et cetera. So this is going to be the standard warranty that will go out with this product when it is shipped. And then we go ahead and save that. And again, this is done at the global org level. So with that set up, we've set up subscription management to handle, handle warranties. We've set up a warranty item. And we've also set up a, um, uh, um, an item that I'll be selling to my customers with a warranty on it. So let's kind of walk through what this looks like um, from order management through to subscriptions. So with that, we'll go over here into order management. I'm going to go ahead and create an order. And I'm going to sell it to my customer, Steel Fitness. Okay, you'll notice, you know, we have searchable as we type, and it brings in all the default ship to, build to, all that kind of thing. And then I'm going to grab my item, the Fit 5000 that we've been working with. And I'm going to add it here. Um, I'm also going to go in and tell it to send, ship it from my um, distribution center. Whether you need to do this or not, it depends on how what you have set up. And then we're going to go ahead and submit this order and write down the order number. Nine eight four two seven. Okay. So going into fulfillment view, we're going to make sure this is uh, set up, ready to be shipped, and then we'll go pick it and ship it. So this is the part that might take a few minutes. Is this where you can fast forward through the boring part of the video? Okay, I paused the recording there while um, the system went through and scheduled reserves and set this product up to be shipped. So now that it's in a waiting shipping mode, I can go ahead and go over into inventory management and pick and ship this product. Okay, so we'll go into um, go over here to my inventory management under supply chain execution. And I really like the info list on here. This shows me that I have something ready to be shipped. So we're going to click on that. It's my order to a, I mean, excuse me, 98427. So this is the order that I need to ship. I'm going to be shipping one of those. And when I put one in here, it opens up the serial number field. So I can pick what serial number is going to be shipped out. So we're going to ship out number 11. I'm going to create my shipment. Once that's created, I can open up the shipment by clicking on the hyperlink and I can validate everything looks good. Down here, I'm shipping one. I've got my serial numbers in. I can actually open this up a little bit. You can see the serial numbers better. 
it's coming out of finished good inventory, so everything looks good here. So I'm going to go ahead and ship confirm this. So this is now closed, it's been picked, it's been shipped, and it's on its way to the customer. And so this is the point where um, we're going to now go over into subscription management again, and we're going to bring in that, that warranty uh, or that uh, shipment. So here I'm back into subscriptions, and it's right here, um, reprocess install beta updates, installed base updates. And doesn't look like it's quite baited in here yet. Okay, so the system finished processing and it brought in um, my um, my shipment with a um, with a pending flag. And so this tells me that this has not been processed yet. It also happens to give me the asset number that it assigned. So the way we process um, the subscriptions is we'll click on it and they and then just submit. And that will go out and create the subscription. So what we'll do is we'll wait for that to finish processing and then we'll bring up the subscription and take a look at it. Okay, so the um, subscription processed and this is it right here, three nine, um, I'm sorry, that was what I did previously, three nine zero five five. So go ahead and click on this and we'll take a look at what it created. So it creates a line, it's called a subscription. It's the steel fitness. Um, we'll click on here. And then the first thing we're gonna do is look at coverage level. Just you tell me the assets that are involved here. So this is my asset number. If you remember, this is the serial number we picked was number 11. So this is the asset that we just picked and shipped. And now I've got a warranty subscription for it. If I click on the hierarchy button, if there are lower level items within here that also will be tracked in install base and might be involved in any kind of uh, warranty activity, they're gonna be listed here as well. <clears throat> so this is my asset that's covered under this warranty. And then if I look at coverage levels, again, it brought in my silver coverage <clears throat> up here, brought in my silver coverage, brought in my um, entitlement rules, basically my service levels, 24 by five, my particular metrics that I need to be dealing with, as well as it brought in all of the discount adjustments that will happen when this product comes in for warranty. And so in the next video, when we walk through um, service logistics and how it gets billed, we'll talk to um, how these come into play and how they help build a customer for warranty work that's being done. So, again, today we went through um, the setup of subscription management for warranties. We actually created or went through the setup for creating a warranty, assigning that warranty to an item, and then we actually created an order, shipped the order, and saw how the warranty was created within subscription management. So, I hope that was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, put them in the um, put them below. I'll also put the PowerPoint out there, uh, walking through everything that we did today. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. Have a great day. I hope this was helpful.